You know, I think it was Franklin Delano Roosevelt said it best. What did it do? The only thing we have to, to fear, fear is fear, fear itself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is actually terrifying. You can imagine being in the crowd and saying, but I'm afraid. And you're the president. And I can't do anything about the fact that I'm afraid. That's right. But seriously, I thought we would talk about fear because That's good. Uh, That's good. I, I don't see too much about it uh, in discussions. Uh, but I know that I myself, at different moments, for example, have had openings and then I thought, oh, you know, what's happening? Am I, am I having a stroke? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <and> <laughs> oh, no. When all the garbage. It's the end. It's getting dark. When all the garbage disappears. <laughs> it's like. I'm dying. I mean, no, literally, the only thing the ego knows what to make of this mm. is that I'm dying. No. It's like, well, you're right. Yeah, actually, that's, exactly, yeah, that is that's exactly what's happening. That's exactly the point. Uh, but that's where I, you know, go about and then joking, I give my ego the executive vice president no. in charge of inventory, dynamic control, exactly. and so forth. But, but the point is, is that fear does, you know, uh, is it, not our friend on this path. Uh -huh. So I think we need to talk a little bit about. Uh, you know, why no fear and how no fear? Mm -hmm. Well, the one thing we, we've discussed is that this path seems to be a battle between desire and fear. And if you've got a ton of fear and not much desire, you will not go forward. You'll only go a little ways. If you've got tremendous desire and tremendous fear, you'll get stopped someplace. You've got to somehow find a way to look at fear, let go of fear, understand fear, and find a way to dissipate it. Just be with it. Just be with it. Because, I mean, if, if almost none of our deep emotions are not underlaid someplace with the fear. Our deep stories about our past traumas have within them this idea of, I'm afraid of this ever happening again. So I keep this around as a story that I can watch for happening exactly the same way. Oh, no, not that. So, not exactly, that. Exactly. It's happening again, again. Exactly. <laughs> well, the thing is, you know, the chance... And it will of, happen when you do that. Well, the chance <laughs> of it ever happening exactly the same way so that this memory is really useful right. is zero. Yeah. It will never happen this way again. What happened right. to you as a six-year-old yeah. is never going to happen to you again. So this old storyline, filled full of fear of its repetition, it's never going to happen. So it's a useless fear. We get into then, can you let just let go of this fear? Can you just let go of this? Can you inquire into, is it real? Is it true? Is it going to happen again? And let go of this fear. And the truly bad feeling that, uh, you know, is recalled for me is that it's really the story that immediately gets told about the fear, right? Mm -hmm. Like a fear, some kind of response happens, mm -hmm. right? You probably know better than I do that how the physiology of fear mm -hmm. actually works. But some kind of physiological response happens. Mm -hmm. And then the mind basically says, oh no, it, is this a stroke? Is, you know, <laughs> uh, is it this? And uh, what's interesting is that the real suffering that, uh, you know, I would feel mm -hmm. was from that moment of the mind narrating it. Mm -hmm. In fact, fear is just a sensation like hot or cold or, you know, uh, love or uh, uh, dread. You know, it's just a sensation. Mm -hmm. And when the sensation uh, is narrated is when the, the suffering right. takes place. But as a sensation, it, it, it's sort of like saying, oh, well, there is spiciness present or mm -hmm. there is the taste of pepper present. It doesn't really do anything to me except for like, oh no, I've eaten too much, <laughs> you know, my whole mouth is full of pepper. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think, uh, you know, people here sometimes say, oh, you got to look fear in the face. It makes it sound like you have to be courageous. You don't have to be courageous, you just have to be with it. Well, and that takes it's a lot of courage. It's the opposite of courageous in a way. It, yeah. it takes a lot of courage to come into fear. Yeah. And instead of doing this with it and yeah. running around behind the thing and hiding, you just welcome fear in. I mean, let fear come in, have a cup of tea with fear and feel it. And you may often find, as you move directly into it, just totally move into accepting fear, that it just isn't there. You go into it and there's nothing there. It was just a storyline. Right. But that's that. Uh, usually what we, I think what we mean by courage is like, oh no, you nothing could bother me. It's like, no, no, it's, you know, it's okay to have the fear. Well, as you said, welcome the fear. Yeah. And then as soon as you uh, welcome the fear, you can be with it. Mm -hmm. And when you're with it, you see, oh, it's nothing. You know, when, when I uh, had some ayahuasca experiences, uh, 
there was a friend of mine uh, that participated in some of these journeys, and she would often get completely paralyzed, paralyzed by fear during these, you know, quite extraordinary episodes at times. And, uh, but she gathered a tactic, I think it was a, a Conondero suggested this to her, where uh, when some basically fear, some demon would present itself to her, instead of making it go away, she would welcome it in and say, you're allowed in all you like as long as you tell jokes, right? <laughs> That's <laughs> and, wonderful. Exactly. That's wonderful. And, and uh, you know, the other technique, you know, that often comes in, which is very close to self-inquiry, is to ask who sent them. Yeah. Who sent you? Yeah. Who, where are you coming from? Right. You know, and it's the old Halloween film, remember? Yeah. The call is coming from within the house, yeah. right? And yeah. so it dissipates. It goes away. Yeah. It's like the old, you know, Ronald Hershey self-inquiry question about to whom has this arisen? Exactly. You know, where does it come from? You know, yeah. what's the, what, what's, well, who's the author? Yeah. And who's it arising to? Right. Who's afraid of a little non-dual awakening? As you said, this, 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 I will fight back here, <laughs> is also fear. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. You, to go up into this mode, yeah. you're in fear yourself. Yeah. You fear, I'll be strong enough yeah. to be, I'll be more fearful than fear can be fearful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. And so all you do is have resistance against fear. Yeah. And it doesn't, it does not work. Right. Be with your death. Yeah, exactly. Be with your death right now. Right. Yeah. And so I think that the fear, you know, when the fear comes in, it's clearly, you know, it's about not wanting to be with what appears to be our, our physical death. Yeah. And I think uh, being uh, one of the most amazing aspects of this path for me is, uh, you know, just how much that practice kind of dissolves that sort of fear mm -hmm. uh, about death, because death just appears to be an attribute of the system of which I am an aspect. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem to be the end of my life, because there is nobody here right. to die. Right. Uh, and, and so I think that, you know, the sooner we get to this idea of just being with that fear, mm -hmm. getting in the coffin, mm -hmm. the more we see, you know, it's just, just a symbolic framework that we've told a story about to ourselves right. about this event that is inevitable only to nobody in particular. That's right. Well, the fear we meant we've manufactured around the fear of death, like the Varshatika man. Richard you'll have no fear of death. This idea that, you know, we've constructed imagined paradises later, yeah. or terrible purgatories or hells to be yeah. to a good person, but in fact that's just a way of us constructing fears around, hopes around, what we can do. And my experience of that, what you're talking about, is that you find, as you disappear, the fear of dying disappears too, because you basically have, in a certain sense, gone away. You have died. But the, but the, but the thing that's worried about the whole process has died. You you haven't died. This hasn't died. Right. But the worrier about what's going to happen when it dies is, is gone. Yeah. He's been subsumed. And so when that happens, there's nobody running around worried about death. Right. It's just gone. And right. even, even, it's just already been dissolved. Well, I, I can feel you know, a response to people saying, but if you don't worry about death, you're going to walk in front of a bus, or you're going to drive 120 miles an hour if your car will go that fast, or you're going to drink 100 shots of tequila, you know, if you're not worried about death, you know, is, isn't, isn't fear our friend? Isn't that why fear exists in an evolutionary uh, context? No, because all those things that made the first one get, are, are already done because people are afraid of dying. Yeah. I mean, they're after the extreme experiences because they think somehow this will give them a transcendent look at something that is beyond death. They're trying to you know, manufacture a way around death. So to me, they aren't facing death. They're, mm. facing, yeah. they're refusing to face it. They're living in the fear of that. Yeah. There are some that have Darwinianly encoded, don't step off a cliff, yeah. which isn't, isn't touched by any of this stuff. You still don't step off a cliff. You don't right. jump in front of a bus. But you don't do the 50 shots of tequila. Yeah. Because you don't need to. You aren't afraid in a way that makes you do extreme behaviors to try to make yourself feel like you're alive. Like you will always be alive yeah. if you just take enough tequila. Right, because you feel much better than you could ever feel on tequila. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> um, uh, no, and, and to go back to the person walking in front of the bus, you know, the person walks in front of the bus because they're distracted by some imaginary wrong right. that has been done to them or they're anticipating exactly. something in the future. Exactly. 
it's not because they've lost all their sense of fear. Right. It, it's because they're living in their fear that they get hit by the bus. Right. 